Chapter 41 Joseph's Prediction About the Infanticide and Sea Voyage to Egypt Child of Jesus, Gospel of James Spoken by Shirin Then Joseph spoke to Cyrenius, noble friend, your intention is good, but you will hardly be capable of carrying it out. Look, in this very night, letters from Herod will reach you, in which you are urged to seize all male children from one up to two years alongside the seashore and send them to Bethlehem, so that Herod can kill them there. You may be able to oppose Herod, but your poor brother has to put on a brave political face, not to expose himself to the bite of the most poisonous of all snakes. Believe me, while I am here with you, there is a massacre going on in Bethlehem, and a hundred mothers are tearing their clothes in despair because of the most cruel loss of their children. And all that is happening because of this one child, of which the three magi of Persia predicted that he shall become a king of the Jews. But Herod took him for a worthy king. That's why he wants to kill him, and he wants to inherit the rule of Judea himself, and fears that this one will take it away from him. Whereas the child only came into this world to redeem mankind from eternal death, when Cyrenius heard this, he jumped in fury against Herod and spoke to Joseph. Listen to me, you man of God. This monster will not force me to become his tool. This day I will depart with you, and in my own ship of thirty oars you will find a good place to rest. I will give the orders to my most trusted and by all the gods sworn men about what they have to do with all those messengers who will arrive here with the letters addressed to me. See, according to our secret laws, they have to be kept in custody until I come back here. The letters have to be taken from them and have to be sent after me, unbeknownst to Herod's messengers, so that I may be aware of their content. But I know already what these letters will contain, and I do know as well how long I will be absent. If other messengers fall later, they will be kept in the tower until I come back. And so let your family be ready now to travel and we will immediately embark on my safe ship. Joseph was happy with the situation and within one hour they were accommodated in the ship, along with Joseph's pack animals. A good wind blew from the north and the journey went smoothly. The journey took seven days, and all the boatmen swore they had never rowed through these waters with so little trouble as this time. But what they found even more miraculous this time was that, according to their belief, Neptune was very hard to please within his element, because he was arranging his creatures on the bottom of the sea and meeting in council with his servants. Cyrenius said to the astonished boatman, Listen, there are two kinds of ignorance. One is free, the other is imposed. Would you be held in the free one, then you could be helped. But if it is you are held in the imposed one, sanctioned by law, one cannot help you. And so you may as well stick to the belief that Neptune has lost his tripod and does not dare to punish us with his scaly hands for all the crimes we have committed against him. Hereupon Joseph asked Cyrenius, Is it not common that boatmen get wages? Please tell me and I shall pay them as it is proper, so that they will not speak badly of us. But Cyrenius said, do not worry, because these are men under my command, and have their wages. Therefore, do not be concerned about that. Joseph replied, That is sure and true, but they are also human beings like us, and we should deal with them as such. 
If their ignorance is imposed, they should dedicate their outer self to that, but their spirit shall be liberated by my offering. So let them come over here, that I may bless them, and they may realize in their hearts that also for them the sun of redemption and grace has risen. At this moment, Cyrenius called the boatmen, and Joseph spoke the following words to them. Listen to me, you faithful servants of Rome and of your master. You have led the ship faithfully and diligently, and good wages should be given to you by me, from whom this journey was made. Yet I am poor, and have neither gold nor silver, but received the grace of God in abundance which is the grace of that God whom you call the known. May this grace be poured into you by the great Lord, so that you become alive in spirit. After these words, everybody had a blissful feeling and started to praise and hail the unknown God. Cyrenius was astonished at the effect of the blessings of Joseph and let himself also be blessed by him. To be continued.